if there's lipstick on my teeth. No, there's not. I'm under no illusions that this is the best filming setup that has ever existed. Um, but quite frankly, <laughs> this is the most comfortable place for me to sit and talk. So that's what you get because we are again, we are out here doing the bare minimum. Hello, bibliophiles. My name is Jill. Long time no see. I think you can tell from my voice, I still like, I still have that cold that I always had in my last video like two weeks ago. It is only finally given up the ghost like today. Um, and like this is the first day in three weeks I haven't had laryngitis. So I <laughs> like haven't been able to film because of my voice. Also, I've just been um, like not sleeping because I was so sick. I started a new job. Um, I'm getting surgery in less than two weeks. So I have just been busy, preoccupied by other things. I've just been trying to manage other things. So I haven't had time to film. I really wanted to film my nonfiction November TBR because if you've been around the channel for any length of time, you know I love nonfiction. You know I love nonfiction November. You know I have a great affection for Olive from A Book Olive, who is the creator of nonfiction November. If you don't know what nonfiction November is, um, I seems unlikely that you'd be here on this channel. I will link Olive's video down below where she explains it all. It's re basically a one month reading initiative where you just read more nonfiction in November than you normally would. Also just wanna say like, shout out to Olive for just being genuinely one of the nicest people on this platform. She has been supportive of me from the very beginning and she is so lovely. And I just wanna say that I think that right now she's producing some of the best content she's ever made on this platform. So if you don't watch her, you should go watch her now because she's just a top notch person who makes great content and I just adore her. So give me a shout out to my, to my pal Olive. So for this reading initiative, this readathon, there is really no rules you just have to read <laughs> at least one non-fiction book but every year olive gives a couple of word prompts just for people who might want to like complete a challenge and i do like a challenge so i'm going to try to meet those word prompts this year so i will tell you the four books that i picked up for those uh challenges and then some other books i just have on my radar the first word prompt for this year's non-fiction member is record and i've chosen to interpret that uh in a legal sense so i'm gonna try to read this book called truth and conviction donald marshall jr and the mi'kmaq quest for justice by l jane mcmillan so I'm not gonna talk a lot about this because I feel like I'm gonna misspeak and like give the wrong information, but I'll read you a little bit about what it says here. This is related to indigenous fishing rights on the East Coast of this country. Um, and it says, this book tells the story of how Marshall's fight against injustice permeated Canadian legal consciousness and revitalized indigenous law. Um, this is important for me to read partially because it's important for uh, just Canadian history, but also my new job is working with indigenous fishing licenses. Um, and I don't talk about my work very much, but I'm really interested in my new job. I think the work is really important. And reading this is gonna be very important to understanding the work I'm doing. So I'm looking forward to reading this. This is a book I borrowed from my friend Jen, friend of the channel, you've seen her in some of my videos. Um, and I bring that up because the next book I'm gonna read is also a book I borrowed from Jen a thousand years ago. And I'm finally gonna read it because the next word prompt for a nonfiction member is Border. And this is a book that, again, that Jen loaned me many years ago. And if you watch the video that Jen and I did uh, two or three years ago, I will link it above uh, where we gave recommendations for a nonfiction member. She mentioned this book in that video. This is Border, A Journey to the Edge of Europe by Kepa Kasabova. The only other person I know who has read this other than Jen is another Jen from Insert Literary Pun here. She read this book and kind of raved about it. This is, what is it about? So this is about the meeting of the border between Bulgaria, Greece, and Turkey. And it says, in this extraordinary work of narrative reportage, Kasabova returns to explore that troubled triple border and discovers a place that has been shaped by successive forces of history the Soviet and Ottoman empires, and, older still, by myth and legend. This is a book that Jen has said to me multiple times that she's never read anything like it. And I, again, I've had it on my shelf for years. That, you know, I've, <laughs> I've stolen it from her for years. And when Olive shared the prompts, I was like, yes, this is the perfect book, the best opportunity. There's no better opportunity to read this book. I'm finally gonna get to it. I haven't filmed in so long that I feel like I've forgotten how to do it. So, sorry. The next word prompt is the word element, and so I've decided to go with this book, Visit to Chernobyl and Other Adventures in the World's Most Polluted Places by Andrew Blackwell. Um, I, I guess it fits with element because it's kind of like weather and climate change and, you know, planetary, el planetary? <laughs> it sounds like solar system, earth um, elements. I feel like this is like about connecting to the to the earth. I don't know. I feel like it just works, you know? Don't press it too hard. Oh, look at this cool map. 
I do love a map. I bought this book this summer and I am curious about it so um I would like to get to it sooner rather than later. I mean I guess if we really want to like be picky about elements we could talk about the Chernobyl disaster and how there was elements, nuclear elements floating in the air. Yeah? I don't know. Um <laughs> I feel like you can get there on your own without me having to like really struggle <laughs> to try to put it into words. Anyway, I really want to read this, so I hope I'll get to this as well this month. And the fourth book goes with the fourth word, which is secret. And I'm going to finally get to, hopefully, the book Stasiland by Anna Funder. These are stories from behind the Berlin Wall. Um, my friend Amy recommended this to me years ago. She really loved it, and I picked it up uh, as a birthday treat for myself earlier this year and haven't read it yet. I've chosen this for the word secret because I feel like, you know, the Soviet state was just full of secrets. And, like, we're still, like, still to this day uncovering secrets from the Soviet era as we, like as more and more documents become, uh, you know, available to the public. So I feel like this is the, per the perfect book to go with the word secret. So these are the four books that I have in mind to go with the prompts for nonfiction of memory. But let's be realistic, like, truthfully, I don't know how much I'm going to read in November <laughs> because I am getting surgery. I don't know how that will affect my ability to read, if I'll even have any energy to read, if I'll be sick, I don't know. So we're going to say that I might read some books in November. We're going to aim to, as we always do anyway. If I somehow magically fly through, you know, a bunch of books this month, here are some other ones I'm thinking about, ones I picked up recently or ones I just had on my shelf for a while that I want to read. This one's called Try Not To Be Strange, The Curious History and King The Curious History of the Kingdom of Redonda by Michael Hingston. So I don't know anything about this book other than I feel like I had seen it a couple of places like on Instagram and maybe on TikTok, not on TikTok. There's no way it was on TikTok. <laughs> I saw this definitely in bookstores has kind of been standing out to me. And I just really like what's happening like with the with the printing of this book. Um, but I don't really know what it's about. I think it's it was in the nonfiction section, um, but I don't know what it is. This is what the first paragraph says. On his 15th birthday in the summer of 1880, Future science fiction writer M.P. Scheel sailed with his father and local bishop from their home in the Caribbean out to the nearby island of Redonda, where, with pomp and circumstance, he was declared the island's king. A few years later, when Scheel set sail for a new life in London, his father gave him some advice. Try not to be strange. It says that this book tells the history of the kingdom of Redonda um, as a transformation from an uninhabited guano-encrusted island into a fantastical international kingdom of writers. I didn't know that was even a thing that existed. I like somehow this feels like <laughs> it might not be nonfiction. I have no idea, but something about it just really appeals to me, and so I'm gonna try to give it a go. And like I'll let you guys know what this actually turns out to be. I hope I also get a chance to read *The Inconvenient Indian*, a curious account of Native people in North America by Thomas King. Um, Thomas King is a fiction writer primarily, although he's written all kinds of stuff. I've read a couple of his books. Haven't loved any of them, but definitely am like ready to try this one. I've heard this is one of his best. So this is, I think, what it says, a narrative uh, or a curious account. I think it's, I think it's written in a narrative voice. I've kind of skimmed it a little bit. I think it's gonna be less um, kind of historically dense and more kind of read a bit lighter and a bit more like a memoir is my, is my guess. I don't know. Obviously haven't read it yet. Um, but I am curious about this, and uh, I've heard great things about it, so I'd like to get to this one eventually. And then I also would like to get to Vesper Flights by Helen McDonald. This was a gift for my birthday from my friends Aaron and Rick. And Helen McDonald wrote, of course, H is for Hawk, which is a book I adored, loved very deeply. This is a collection of essays, uh, largely about nature, probably like mostly about birds is what I'm guessing, but it seems like a lot about nature. Um, th they seem like very short essays because there's a lot of them in here. So there's like Gosh, there's like, there's like the, the table of contents for the essays is two pages long, which is unusual in an essay collection. And it's not a very, it's only 250 pages. So I suspect they're gonna be quite short. I think having like an essay collection and some shorter, shorter pieces will be a good option if I'm just not feeling in the mood to read uh, for long stretches of time. And then lastly, <laughs> I'm gonna, will I ever read this book? I mean, I obviously will, but I really want to read this year and I just don't know what's going to happen because time is running out, friends, for the year. Um, this is Chatter, Patrick Brandon Keefe's first book. Um, this is Dispatches from the Secret World of Global Eavesdropping. This book uh, does not exist in print anymore. I had to get this off of Thrift Books and like, look how it's a horrible copy. I mean, maybe you can't tell this, but it's like <laughs> really beat up. And when I bought it, they said it's in great condition. This is not great condition, friends. Uh, this is like, look at this cover real bad. Anyway, I really want to read this book because I would like to do a video talking about all of Patrick Redden Keefe's published works. I do have this on audiobook as well, so this might be an option 
uh, for my for my audiobook for the month. Although I tried listening to this a couple of times in the past, I've had it for a little while. I just don't like the narrator at all. So uh, I wish that like Patrick Anaki read his own books on audiobook because Empire of Pain on audiobook read by him is like perfection. And I was thinking about this because like last year I did not. I, upon reflection, I was crazy to not put Empire of Pain as one of my top books of last year on my you know best books of last year. But when I listened to it this year. I think it's gonna be on my top books of this year um just because i think he's so good at narrating his own books but again um he doesn't narrate this one but anyway i have to read it at some point because um i need to do that video i want to do that video it's something i really want to do my friends i do apologize for my absenteeism but you know it's all for a good reason i haven't been intentionally avoiding you <laughs> i just haven't been able to film realistically i'm not sure how much i'm gonna be able to film over the next couple of weeks because of all the things that's going on that i mentioned um but you know hopefully i'll be able to film something I'd like to film uh, a book haul because I have bought many books since the summer when I was on a book buying ban. Remember that? LOL. I did not ban myself from buying books. If there's anything you want me to film, let me know. I'll see what I can get done in the next couple of weeks. Um, again, I'm just going to be prioritizing my health. Uh, I've been honestly been like really sick for like a year and I'm finally getting what I need to get better. So uh, I'm really focusing on that. I'm so looking forward to finally feeling well. So um, I'm gonna do my best to film, but realistically, again, I'm putting my health first over the next couple of weeks. Let me know what you have in mind to read during nonfiction. Remember, I always love to see people's TBRs and what they're excited about. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys hopefully soon. Bye!